So hello to everybody out there in abstract algebra land. Um, this is our live stream for today's review for exam number two. Uh, so we're going to get started here in just a couple of minutes. Uh, I've got to move around a couple of uh, components here on my screen just to make sure everybody can see everything. Um, feel free to join in uh, via the Twitch chat uh, here on the channel. Your uh, comments and questions will show up right into the video. Uh, in addition to that, I've also got an eye on the Slack uh, course site as well. Uh, so feel free to drop your questions in either location, uh, and we'll sort of monitor both places uh, for any questions and comments as we go along. Um, let me just put a quick live now notice into Slack. <laughs> OK, so exam two um, has sort of a variety of different goals uh, that I'm going to be asking you to, to work towards. Um, and they're each sort of topics that we could consider reviewing here in the live stream today. Um, in our course, these go by goals number five through eight. Uh, so number five relates to permutations and symmetric groups. Uh, goal six relates to isomorphisms. Uh, goal seven, cosets, and Lagrange's theorem, probably one of the most important milestones uh, in the entire course, is Lagrange's theorem. Uh, and then finally, goal eight is direct products of groups. Um, so if you have a, a particular desire of something you'd like to see covered, uh, do drop a suggestion either into Slack or into the Twitch chat. Uh, I'll be looking at both of those as we go through today's session. We'll be going until about 10 o'clock. Um, I've got a few problems that I can work on if I don't get suggestions from you. Of course, you can also watch this video after the fact uh, and ask questions about it, uh, either in Slack or on YouTube or wherever you like uh, once this archived video gets posted. So I think what I'd like to do to get started um, is I'd like to kind of pick one or two problems that kind of get the opportunity to look at all of these uh, topic areas taken together. So let's start by thinking about cosets and Lagrange's theorem. So thinking about topic number seven, um, but working on an example of it uh, that gives us the opportunity to think also about permutations and isomorphisms. So here's what I'd like to do to get us started. So we're going to try and, and meld together some elements from topic number seven on cosets and Lagrange's theorem, some elements from topic five on permutations, some elements of six from isomorphisms, and some elements of eight from direct products, all in one problem. I'm not going to ask you to be quite this integrative on the exam that's coming up tomorrow, um, but I think it'll give us a good opportunity to review a little bit of everything. So here's a question. And the question is to find a subgroup of the alternating group A5. And I'd like for this subgroup of A5 uh, to have order 12. So I want a 12 element subgroup of A5. And then the subordinate question that I'm going to ask is, uh, to what group of order 12 is it isomorphic? So figure out what is the isomorphism class of that subgroup. So this is going to have a little bit of everything uh, in it, because it's going to require us to, first of all, think about the nature of permutations. Uh, in particular, uh, what can we say about the even permutations of five symbols? That's the elements of the group A5. So we're going to have to reckon with that first. Um, second of all, we're going to have to sort of reach back into our bag of tricks and think about how we even make a subgroup of a group to begin with. Um, but then this is also going to lead us into thinking about questions of um, cosets and Lagrange's theorem, because one way of finding a subgroup of order 12, according to Lagrange's theorem, is to find a subgroup that has the right number of cosets uh, inside of A5. And if we know the order of A5, then we know how many cosets, according to Lagrange's theorem, that we're going to need this subgroup to have. Um, and then finally, uh, to ask the question to which group of order 12 is it isomorphic uh, is going to lead us down a path of thinking about, well, what groups of order 12 are there? 
uh, out there. What are the isomorphism classes of groups of order 12? Um, which is really, in, at least in part, a direct product question. Um, and then ideally identifying one of those to which our group is isomorphic, that's going to help us to think about isomorphisms as well. So I think this is a great question to really get us a, a, a survey of everything, uh, even if it's certainly more involved of a question than I'm prepared to ask you on the exam. So let's start investigating this question um, by just doing some work on the back of a napkin, uh, just to sort of get some thoughts onto the page uh, that may or may not be organized in any sort of logical fashion. So get my Hilbert Hotel napkin out here, uh, and let's start thinking uh, about what we would have. So first of all, what is A5? What does it even mean in the first place? So A5 is the set of even permutations even because that's what alternating group means. Even permutations of five symbols. So these are ways of permuting a set of five objects, symbols, whatever those are, whether they're letters A through E, whether they're vertices of a pentagon, whether they're numbers one through five, whatever. Ways of permuting those symbols such that we can write them as, can be expressed as, a composition of an even number of transpositions. Of an even number of transpositions. And remember, transposition is a fancy word for a two cycle. So when we think about what the group A5 actually is, um, what we're thinking of, if we just get some examples, um, are anything that I can write as a product of an even number of permutations. So the identity permutation, for example, I can write using zero transpositions. And so that belongs to, to A5. Um, if I write down a single transposition like 1, 2, that doesn't belong to A5 because it's only one. It's an odd number of transpositions. But if I compose it with another transposition, let's say the disjoint transposition 3, 5, there's an example of an element in A5. But so too would be the product of 1, 2 with 1, 3, for example. But we have a way to write that in a more simplified fashion. 1, 2 composed with 1, 3 uh, would be the 3 cycle, 1, 3, 2. So all of these are elements of A5. They're not all of the elements, but they're at least some of the elements of A5. So probably the first step toward understanding how to do this problem, how to discover a, a subgroup of order 12 inside of A5, it seems like a, a reasonable first thing that I'd want to do is understand what form all of these elements take. And better yet, if I can also say something about the orders of these various elements, that would seem to be a helpful piece of the process also. Let me take my napkin and sort of put it off over here to the side. OK, so we kind of have at least an initial feel for what the elements of A5 look like. Let's try and be more systematic. So to do that, what I want to do is I want to list the cycle types. Maybe I'll put an example of a permutation that has each cycle type. Um, and then figure out what is the order of those various elements. So cycle type, example, and order of elements that have this cycle type. All right, so <coughs> we convinced ourselves that, for example, the identity element is an even permutation. So again, I'm going to remind myself up here that I want even permutations, those that I can write as a product of an even number of transpositions. And so the cycle type of the identity permutation is sometimes we write it as 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 inside of A5. Every element of A5 is just being fixed. And so we could write it as uh, parentheses 1, and then parentheses 2, parentheses 3, parentheses 4, parentheses 5. Um, but that's really the same thing as doing no permutation at all. So that's the identity element. There's only one of those uh, in any group, uh, and always has order 1, because its first power is equal to the identity. Well, OK. 
so if I can't have zero transpositions, if I wanted to actually do something interesting, um, what is my next uh, sort of my next best example of a even permutation? Oh, sorry, I'm trying to get. Uh, let me use a yellow hand for the rest of the day. So, if I have a product of two transpositions, like one, two, composed of three, five, as an example, right? um, that's an even permutation, and it would have cycle type two plus two plus one as a product of disjoint cycles. So it's a two cycle composed with another disjoint two cycle, and then there's one element in this example. It would be the symbol number four. There's one symbol that's being left fixed by this kind of transposition. So this is an even permutation, because I can write it using a product of two transpositions. And its order is therefore the least common multiple of the cycle lengths of the cycles that comprise it, the disjoint cycles that comprise it. And so the order of that element is two. I can keep going. right? My other example from my napkin was one, two, one, three. Right? Uh, and that was a product of two transpositions, but we can simplify it because the transpositions are not disjoint. We simplified that into one, three, two, a three cycle. And if I just have this three cycle, then I'm leaving the other two elements, uh, or the other two symbols rather, which would be four and five in this example, I'd be leaving those two symbols fixed. So three plus one plus one would be the cycle type. And the order of that element, it's a three cycle, so its order is three. So we have some elements in A5 of order one, some elements of order two, some elements of order three. And it's, I think, easy to convince yourself that if I'm composing together two permutations, uh, sorry, two transpositions, that either those transpositions are going to be disjoint, and therefore it has the cycle type 2, 2, 1, or if they're not disjoint, those two transpositions combine together to form a three cycle and form something of the second cycle type. So then the next option in A5 would be a product of four transpositions. Um, the issue with that is that we don't have any situation in A5 in which all four of these transpositions are going to be disjoint. Um, because we just don't have enough symbols to permute around. In order for all four of these to be disjoint, we would need to have at least eight symbols to work with, and we don't. Um, so we know for sure that any product of four transpositions is going to be able to be simplified. Um, and in particular, a product of four transpositions will always be able to be simplified into a five cycle in A5. So five would be the cycle type of one of these. One, two, five, three, four would be an example. Right? Um, and the order of those permutations, at least common multiple of five, would be five. And so there's no way, it turns out, inside of the group A5 uh, to make any elements uh, that have orders other than one, two, three, or five. Uh, for example, um, there's no way to make an element of order 4 inside of A5 because such an element as an even permutation would have to be a 4 cycle. Um, but a 4 cycle is not an even permutation uh, because we can't write a 4 cycle as a product of an even number of transpositions. It would have to be a product of 3 or 5 or whatever numbers of transpositions. <clears throat> so uh, if that doesn't work, then these are really our only options. And so the question for us then is from among these elements, uh, how, do we, how do we make a group of order 12? Uh, and the idea that just popped up in the stream is, what if I just chose, as a subgroup of A5, what if I just chose A4? And that's a great idea. So what about A4 as a subgroup of A5? Because if we remember how to count uh, elements of uh, uh, permutation groups, we'll remember that A4 has order equal to the order of S4 divided by 2. And since the order of S4 is 4 factorial, that's 12. Um, and the question in the stream is, if, if we just saw that, out of the gate in a problem like this? Uh, could we just state it uh, and then move on? And I would say yes, as long as you convince me why A4 is a subgroup of A5. 
um, because the thing there is that it's a subgroup of A5 in actually a number of different ways. So we would want to explain which subgroup isomorphic to A4 that you're talking about. That would, I think, be the only burden of proof that I'd want here. So which uh, subgroup of A5 isomorphic to A4. Um, hold on just a moment. I need to uh, I need to answer a, a text message. So I'll be back in the stream in, in just a moment, and we'll continue. <laughs> 